Hello, everyone. Uh, we are here to present our talk titled Language Planning During the Pandemic, a Jenjongke Butia Language Survey. This talk will be delivered by Kunjang Namgyal, Jingmi Wangchuk Butia, and Sung Hun Lee. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Jingmi Wangchuk Butia, and I'm an assistant professor uh, in SIHNS Shedda and as a PGT in Inche. I was working as a PGT in Inche Senior Secondary School. So today uh, I will be talking about Jianjongki, Butia language, and I will be giving a brief introduction to this language. So uh, uh, when we talk about uh, Butia language, is it is very important to go uh, after the background of Sikkim. So uh, when we talk about the background of Sikkim, we always talk about uh, Guru Padma Sambhava, who is said to be the second Buddha according to the Buddhism. So after the visit of this second Buddha, Guru Rinpoche, in the eighth century, uh, with his along with his uh, uh, followers, and especially after the arrival of legendary K. Pumsa as a father of Butia language uh, in the Sikkim, uh, and also uh, now after the advent of the great uh, treasure rebuilder, Pigzang Godimchen, uh, and uh, eventually uh, the coronation or the enthronement of the first Shugil by the three great Lamas in the 17th century. So at the time, the main language was used as uh, Bhutia language or Danjongki, which comes into the uh, 25 tibeto burman language spoken in all over the Trans-Himalayan region. So when we talk about Danjongki, Danjongki, uh, you know, it's a, it gradually evolved into its present distinct uh, in a written as well as in a spoken form. So Denjunke, or uh, broadly known as Sikkimese Bhutia language is among it, amongst the 25th uh, Tibet, uh, Tibeto Burman language uh, or the dialect of Tibetan language, which we use as a Sikkimese Bhutia language. So, Denjongke is uh, referred to uh, the language spoken by the people who uh, lived in Denjong or the valley. It, is, it has been translated into English as a valley of rice or the valley of abundant grains, fruits, and uh, other uh, uh, plants and flowers. So Denjong or the uh, there are different names given to our language, Denjongke, Bhutia language, Sikkimese Bhutia language, uh, or the Hoke, uh, because Hoke again refers to the people who live to the uh, salt words of the Tibet. So that's why it referred as a Denjong, Denjong, Popo. Uh, that's why it uh, refers as a and Denjongke or the language is spoken by the people living in the south of the Tibet. So scholars of scriptural classical Tibetan, they generally refer uh, uh, us as a Toki, as I mentioned earlier. So as uh, Sir George Abram, he mentioned uh, in the linguistic survey of India that uh, there were only like 35,960 speakers of Janjongke across India, including Darjeeling and Kalimpong and some part of West Bengal and North Bengal. But in the census of India in 2001, uh, uh, there were, I think, 41,825 speakers of Janjongke. The exact number is very uh, difficult for me to speak. Uh, but in these slides, uh, we are going to uh, view a very brief about Denjongki. There are about 30,000 speakers, which means 7% of the population in Sikkim. Uh, uh, there are six, uh, seven lakhs uh, population. 
but uh, Denjong, uh, Denjongpo or the Bhutias are of one lakh, and the speakers rose uh, to 30,000, uh, which is equivalent to 7% of the population in Sikkim. And it is not only uh, the just a spoken language in Sikkim, but it is uh, it has also uh, uh, you know, like offered a platform in uh, secondary or uh, middle, middle school, as well as in higher education, like colleges. Uh, there are seven colleges and universities level. And even we have now introduced PhD, the Sikkim University or the Central University of Sikkim in Sikkim, uh, which uh, I hope that uh, it will bring some hope of lights to the future generation of Danjongki speakers. Uh, and uh, you can see in the uh, third point there, it has been written that until 1975, which means uh, Sikkim was a very democratic uh, uh, and a, uh, a country or Buddhist kingdom, which was ruled by the Namgyals of Sikkim since 1642 to 1975. And the main uh, official language uh, uh, communication was uh, used as Tibetan and Bhutia language, but the written language was uh, Tibetan. And at the time, the lingua franca was Bhutia or the Denjongki, which was spoken by every, uh, you know, like uh, <clears throat> uh, every works, uh, every people from different walks of life. So this is like, like the uh, brief fact about Denjongki. And in the current uh, scenario, in the present scenario in Sikkim or the Denjong, uh, now the uh, the scenario has changed and it has become the ling lingua franca of Sikkim or Denjong has become Nepali, uh, which is like mass populated in the state. And the medium of instruction in the higher education as well as in the middle, middle schools are all uh, taught and used in English. And uh, including Sikkimese Bhutia language, we have uh, 12, uh, state recognized languages uh, which are you know like um, found in a diverse uh, uh, which are found in diverse history and the uh, the people they have been like uh, trying and they are uh, doing their best to preserve and converse the uh, conserve the languages so far so uh, I am very much grateful for uh, this talk Is it okay, sir? So now uh, coming to the uh, India or broader perspective of language in India. So I will be very brief in this. Uh, in the, you can see in the first uh, line that it has been uh, recorded as linguistic diversity in India. There are total 22 uh, scheduled languages, which are used as uh, official languages in the uh, entire nation of, uh, or the world uh, largest democratic country, 99 non-scheduled languages. Uh, and additional, there are 1,248 languages as for mother tongue languages. And uh, the Sikkim is uh, Bhutia language, uh, which comes under the tibeto burman languages in India, uh, we, which we can see the map, uh, where the orange uh, colored uh, map, the Tibeto Burman languages in India are spoken. Oranges areas on the map, like 116 Tibeto Burman languages are uh, there according to the uh, 1900 or not three, 1928, uh, according to the Linguistic Survey of India. So during the pandemic, uh, uh, the Janjongke community and uh, we worked uh, at, uh, together to have some information sharing. And like any other parts of the world at the time, the Janjongke community also uh, had uh, an increase in homebound members. Uh, interestingly, there was some uh, um, first information that was spreading uh, through the SNS. So the misbusters from the World Health Organization uh, was translated by the first author, Kunzang Namgyal, uh, Kunzang Namgyal uh, and was shared on a web website. And one of the um, uh, example is shown on the right side of this. Originally, this information was only available in the six official languages. Currently, we have about 115 languages uh, with this information. So 
uh, as we, as Jingmi mentioned, uh, currently uh, in Sikkim, the dominance of Nepali is the uh, uh, fact of life. And uh, Jajongke has been losing ground, uh, even uh, by the core community members. Uh, and uh, even so, uh, what uh, we realized at this point uh, was, or what Kunzang realized was, uh, there has been no systematic language survey that would have uh, measured uh, the degree of language loss or even the attitude amongst the community members. So uh, Kunzang uh, devised a, a comprehensive survey, uh, and this was the first after the state of Sikkim became part of India in 1975. And uh, uh, this designed survey uh, was uh, shared during the COVID-19 pandemic uh, in order to uh, address uh, the gap that exists uh, related to the uh, language situation of uh, Chen Zhongke in Sikkim. Uh, as, uh, so um, that's our language introductions and uh, what we are doing, uh, it's a short uh, introductions videos. Now, since we do have a language, we do have a that's gradually losing its ground uh, in our own communities. To make some concrete plan, we, we have to have some kind of the survey or we need to have some kind of the data to work on that. So uh, it was actually plan was much earlier. We had planned such kind of things because that uh, survey was never happened in our language since 1975 or even before that there was no survey was done in uh, Bhutia language. <clears throat> so uh, with various talks given by Dr. Lee and uh, uh, other community, uh, other people. So we decided to have a, some kind of uh, ground reality checks. What are the, where we are lacking and what are the things that we need to uh, develop to promote this language. So we came up with these things during the pandemic, which was kind of the blessing in disguise of things. So we had divided seven parts in 56 questions, prepared 56 questions, which were divided in the seven parts, basic demographies. Sikkim is quite a small states, which have very uh, small, limited number of peoples, only six lakhs populations uh, out of this. Uh, Bhutia's population was uh, around 40,000, uh, 40 to 50,000 with the speakers of 40,000. But the uh, main thing is the people who speak Bhutia's, they don't, some people can speak, some people can uh, read, some people can write. But the things are like, if you, a lot of people can speak, but they can't read and write because we, we are using a script of uh, Tibetan script. So is there any other alternative to have these things to promote the language? This is also one of the things which we were trying to find out. So basic demography is one thing, language usage, speaking, reading, listening, and writing are the other things to measure the things and the learning language and teachings. As I'm the, uh, working as the language teachers, and we found that a lot of the language uh, words are gradually losing its ground and uh, and the uh, vanishing from the, our day-to-day -day use. Uh, well, in the part five, we try to find the people's attitude toward the language. How are they already reading the Bhutia's books? Are they are listening to Bhutia's songs? And are they ready to uh, uh, kind of the support the language, use of the language by and any means and the culture knowledge, which is again, very important. If you are losing a language grounds, then the it, obviously language will, culture will the lose, history will also vanish in the due course of time. So we try to find how the peoples are, how can we can uh, uh, promote the cultures and lang history through language or the, we can save the language through culture and history. These are the things that we try to uh, promote the thing. This is the language uh, survey which we created. It's not only me, there were the uh, five, five to six people we were engaged together. And in the meantime, when we were preparing these things, uh, Sikkim, we do have around 18 communities live together. So without uh, 
we try to, there are a lot of people who can speak the Bhutia language and who are very interested to learn the Bhutia language because it does contain a lot of history. If you want to know the Bhutia Sikkimese history, uh, you need to know the language of the Bhutias. So that's the thing. So we try to uh, include all the people who want to uh, share their thoughts on the Bhutia language. These are the some things which we created during the pandemics. <clears throat> Basic information, major part. Basic information is where they are from, how they language uses and the language learning teaching. <clears throat> are they really want to learn the language? One thing, if they are willing to learn, we can uh, create some kind of the platforms and the cultural knowledge, like uh, folklores, uh, folk songs, and the child game, children games, a lot of things where we try to cover it within this uh, survey to create the uh, working platforms, historical knowledge. Uh, initially, we thought that with, uh, since everyone was in the home, so we were expecting quite high number of uh, people participating, but uh, we didn't go like our expectations. Demographic response. There were all together, it's only uh, we are taking the data from the July 28 to August 20, 31st data. We are at the present, we are presenting this much. If you see the uh, age breakups below 20, uh, not much people were in, shown much interest below 20s. Maybe they were restricted to, the, to use of the mobile phones and all these things. And the, if you see the 20 to the 50s, uh, age of 50s, it's quite mm -hmm. uh, encouraging ones. However, this also gap was like, uh, if you see the above 50s people, if you can, if, if you find the people who are very fluent, very, uh, they can read, write, and the, speaking very fluent in the above 50s range, then th that language doesn't have much scope and, uh, as per the uh, language service rules. So we try to find out these things. So basically what we were trying to do was with this knowledge, we were trying to introduce the Bhutia language in three different forms. One in the traditional systems, which we are teaching in the school levels, college levels, and the, all the textbook are available in those things. And another one is uh, phonological denjunke, where the, uh, we try to make it a little easy to write easy to read. And the one is um, Romanized Denjonke. What happening is like a lot of the peoples are educated in the English schools. They don't know how to read the Tibetan uh, Bhutia script, how to read, write Bhutia script, but they are very good in Bhutia language. And they contain, they do have very good knowledge of the Bhutia's histories, culture, traditional, everything. So we try to introduce the Romanized Denjunke to promote their, to uh, um, record their knowledge in the written form. So these are the main things that we are trying to uh, see the respondent peoples. Now, if you see the demographic uh, map of the Sikkims, which they are, which is divided by four uh, four districts, north, east, west, and the south. East is the capital of the uh, capital city of the Sikkim. Northern part, much of the northern part is covered in the forest and the uh, mountains areas. There are the less of the people sleep in the northern part, and the southwest. <clears throat> uh, most of the respondent, when you see the letter on, you can find that most of the respondent are from the East Sikkim because it is the uh, capital city of the Sikkims where the peoples come for various reasons, job available, job abilities, and the uh, access of the internet is quite uh, good in the East Sikkims. So the, you can find the respondent, a lot of the respondent are the East. However, they are migrated from either from North, either West or the South. These are the uh, um, ground reality of this survey. So uh, we were interested in uh, the relationship between where people grew up and where they live currently. And uh, 
we uh, Kunzang already mentioned that majority of the respondents uh, are uh, in East Sikkim, and uh, their also childhood area was from East Sikkim. Actually, in this graph, what you can see here is the X axis uh, shows the four different uh, regions in Sikkim: East, North, South, and West. And uh, the bars uh, under each category shows where uh, the number of people who uh, grew up in different kind of uh, region within Sikkim. Uh, so what happens is in the uh, north, south, and west, uh, the majority of people uh, who responded, uh, they actually grew up there and they still live there. Uh, and uh, what we can see in the east is uh, people from north, south, west moved uh, uh, to the east uh, Sikkim area. Some people from the East Sikkim uh, moved uh, to North, South, West, uh, probably due to uh, job reasons. Uh, what we also can see is uh, the movement or migration pattern between North, South, and West uh, were uh, minimal. So people uh, uh, rarely moved uh, uh, between rural areas. If they moved, they moved to the urban areas. And uh, uh, this is also shown when we only look at the urban versus rural uh, resident type. So uh, people who currently live in rural tend to be from rural area and people who live in urban uh, tend to come from urban area. Again, this graph can be seen as current resident type uh, in the X axis. And within each type, uh, the red means uh, rural area as a childhood and uh, urban area uh, as a childhood is green. So uh, more people move from the uh, rural area to an urban area as, the, uh, as they grow up. So that's a, a very common pattern uh, that we see uh, in uh, many migration patterns. So uh, even in Sikkim, uh, the situation was uh, uh, comparable. Then uh, we report a few facts about the language ability. He has two graphs uh, focusing on the speaking and the reading ability related to Jujen Jongke. Uh, in each of this round, a ring graph, uh, the outer ring represents uh, uh, inability uh, to speak Bhutia or to read Bhutia. Uh, the inner ring, uh, the smallest one, uh, represent uh, I can use Butia or read Butia in all situation or all different kinds of text. So uh, what we can uh, in a glance at a glance uh, immediately can find is uh, speaking ability vary a lot from people who can speak a variety of uh, degree of Butia, whereas the reading uh, is uh, uh, heavily uh, geared towards people uh, uh, expressing that they cannot read uh, Butia text. And uh, uh, so uh, in detail, uh, about 46% of the uh, participants uh, responded that they are sufficiently proficient in the spoken language, uh, showing that they are pretty confident. Uh, about half of the respondents were confident in uh, the spoken ability related to Jenjongke. However, when it came to reading, the confidence in the literacy dropped uh, significantly. Uh, so only 33% uh, uh, said uh, they can uh, confidently read uh, Bhutia text. And uh, here we don't have a graph, but the writing uh, was lower than that. And only one quarter of the people uh, actually said they were confident in uh, uh, writing uh, uh, Bhutia text. And uh, confident basically means uh, at least some or most uh, Bhutia uh, writing uh, is included. So, um, uh, even so, uh, what we found was uh, nearly all respondents, uh, uh, 1607 out of 704 respondents expressed a strong willingness to further learn the language. Um, so the desire to communicate in Jenjongke was really strong, even though they, at the present, they cannot necessarily read or write. Uh, the spoken ability was pretty high, as we've seen. And uh, also, uh, compared to other languages, uh, uh, Zhenjongke was uh, perceived to be difficult for 63% of the respondents. Uh, so even though they can speak and uh, communicate, they found it difficult, uh, probably suggesting they find the reading and writing part difficult, uh, which also connects to what Kun Zhang briefly mentioned about romanized Zhenjongke, how to uh, devise an orthographic system that's more uh, friendly for the uh, Jenjoke community members. Uh, we also found it interesting that a majority of the respondents 
think that uh, Jen Jongke words or words unique to Jen Jongke are gradually disappearing. And we will uh, uh, immediately see a response uh, to the survey that was done. Start. And even we have like uh, come up with uh, one committee, uh, which is called as a Bhutia language website development committee or in short BLWDC. In this committee, what we have been doing is that we are trying to develop one uh, committee where we will, uh, where we will uh, build or develop one website uh, where we can see the history, the language, the literature, the culture, the entire thing of Bhutia uh, in it. And as well as we are also trying to develop an apps for children, school going children, as well as uh, for the senior citizens, where we, uh, through which uh, means we can uh, learn the Bhutia language. So this is uh, uh, about BLWDC, which was, uh, which came into existence uh, in the year 2000. And uh, it was uh, first, it was initially, it was, uh, it came, the idea came up in the year 2016 and 15 and 16. Then from then onwards, we have been working uh, till date. So again, uh, uh, due to this uh, COVID-19, uh, we have come up with uh, the motivation of like uh, coming up with uh, online uh, YouTube channel, uh, which is uh, which has been named and uh, named as a learn Bhutia language or Danjongke or basic Bhutia conversation, uh, which uh, I started uh, on the sixth September two thousand twenty, and I have been doing this uh, every Saturday that I, I upload uh, new uh, video regarding the basic uh, language. Uh, of Bhutia, um, Bhutia language. So uh, people with uh, enthusiasm, then they can always follow the given uh, YouTube uh, link. So from there, anyone can come and join, any, anyone can learn the basic uh, concept of Bhutia language. From there, I think it will, uh, we hope that uh, the sparkles of the lights will uh, come up with a very positive vibes. Yes, so, so far we have uh, presented some of the findings uh, of the first language survey that was conducted in the state of Sikkim related to the Bhutia language. As uh, we have uh, uh, shown, the an online language survey was met with enthusiasm. In fact, the respondents were 5.6% of the entire Jen Jongke population, which, is, uh, uh, which we found amazing. Uh, uh, Kunjang mentioned that they were hoping for a much higher number, but uh, knowing a little bit uh, of other surveys, I, I really think 5.6% was a great, re uh, great response rate. Uh, uh, the implementation of the results were also uh, immediately happening. Uh, so online tools uh, were developed by Jingmi and uh, he's, he has been uploading uh, uh, Jenjongke materials and Jenjongke um, uh, videos uh, on YouTube communities. Uh, so anybody who is interested in can actually sign up and uh, subscribe and uh, learn Jenjongke. And it also raised awareness to the community members. We do hope uh, that this momentum will continue so that the younger generation of Jejonke speakers will continue to develop language proficiency. And also uh, there will be many more programs that uh, will be developed uh, to address the needs of the Jejonke speakers. So here we have some short references and we thank all the respondents and uh, there's uh, information of the grant uh, that funded some earlier parts of the project. Uh, to the chat, thank you very much. Yeah.